analysis machine. Are you set? Ready. Any. Time. Give me file 27-01-01. Recognize. Time coming as data is being transferred. Ty is the original leader of the Diddy Dusters, and is often regarded as one of the most recognized and likable characters in the entire series. Though he's no Marcus Damon, it's not unusual to see him charging into the thick of battle with his partner Digimon, and his bravery and fortitude, even in the most dire of situations, have made him a symbol of both courage and leadership. But was this always the case? Sup guys, this is D Reaper, and today we're going to do a character analysis on Ty Kamiya. We've got a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, it's important to recognize that even though we kind of assume Ty to be the leader of the gang, due to the fact that he's the one narrating the story, amongst other things, it's actually pretty deep into the story when Ty becomes the official leader of the group. But like most things, it's best to put first things first, so let's begin at the beginning. When the kids first enter the digital world, most don't really know each other that well. With the exception of Ty and Sora, who have been in school together for a while and played on the same soccer team, and obviously Matt and TK, who are brothers. So by and large, as they're learning about their new environment, they're also learning about each other. Though the four older kids try to establish some type of structure, even early on, Ty goes above and beyond, really showing his mettle when they first encounter Shellmon. It's their second big monster attack, and this time the Digimon seem unable to fend off this threat. While some try to run, some cry, and others cower, Ty grabs a piece of debris and starts trying to fend off the monster with Agumon. And though it's true, not everybody's good under pressure, and being good in a fight doesn't necessarily make you a good leader. But we see Ty's mindset when he gets grabbed by Shellmon. Even as he's getting the life squeezed out of him, he's more concerned that his friends are being attacked than he is about his own precarious situation. Ty can be kind of a bonehead. He definitely leans more towards Bronny than Brayden. But we see time and time again a desire and willingness to help others, whether they be Digimon or his friends. Ty is a man of action, and he's the one primarily pushing the group to move forward. Like when he pushed the team to climb Infinity Mountain, or when leading the charge to leave Foul Island. And though this sometimes created opposition in the group, primarily from Matt, he acknowledges that their situation won't improve unless they're willing to take action, to do something about it. After the group arrives on the server continent, Ty gets one of the major challenges to his character. By this point, the team has grown to trust each other a lot more. While being chased around the continent by the powerful Edamon, it's not easy being a superstar, little bunny, but someone's gotta do it. Ty becomes the first of the group to possess both a tech and a crest. These are the tools that the Digi Distance will need to help the Digimon to evolve to the ultimate level and defeat Edamon. With this development, Ty elevates himself and Agumon to the sole protectors of the group, and with that new status, he himself will be making all of the decisions for everyone. Now, it's important to recognize this distinction. Even before this point, the group has gone along with most of Ty's decisions, but there's a stark difference between his past and current behavior. While in the past, he won people over with his confidence and conviction, his current actions were boorish in nature. He demands the compliance of the others, and is harsh with anyone who questions his authority. Even his partner Digimon is not spared from this treatment. After he commandeers the food meant for the entire group, he force feeds Agumon until he feels like he's about to explode. Then he resolves to purposely put himself in danger to force Agumon to Digivolve further in order to save him. Under the thumb of Ty's forced leadership, the others in the group certainly have their complaints, but Sora sticks up for Ty, as she recalls them playing soccer together and assures them that Ty values the concept of teamwork, and they should trust him. This was the wrong call. To put it simply, the plan ended in disaster. It would be fine if he digivolved into Metal Greymon, but we can't have him turning into Skull Greymon. Actually, Gojo, that's precisely what happens. While doing his best to protect everyone himself, and caving to the obstructive pressure from his partner, Greymon digs deep to find the strength to reach another level, and touches something dark. Skull Greymon easily dispatches the enemy, then turns his fury on the group as well. As Skull Greymon runs amok, Ty realizes he made a terrible mistake. He tries to call out to Skull Greymon, but it's as if his partner doesn't even recognize him anymore. The rampage is short lived, but Skull Greymon is able to take down several of the other Digimon and bust up a Colosseum before he runs out of energy and reverts back to Koromon. Everyone is a bit shaken, but none so much as Ty and Koromon. Koromon tries to apologize for what happened, but Ty puts the blame on himself. 
This only happened because he tried to force his partner to digivolve to ultimate, without having any clue on how to go about it. It's important to note that when Tai messes up, he quickly takes ownership for his mistakes and actions that caused it. Oftentimes when people mess up, particularly when the damages are excessive, some people are not willing to admit it was their actions that caused the problem. Sometimes it takes weeks or even months before they own up to their mistakes, and that's if ever. Even more so, many put in this situation would jump at the chance to place blame, or at the very least share it to absolve themselves of some of the guilt. Boromon offered the perfect opportunity to do just that. After all, Tai didn't attack the other Digimon, and he's not capable of smashing up a Colosseum. He'd gotten his partner to the next level as promised, it's not his fault that his partner couldn't keep it together. But instead, we see Tai taking full responsibility and showing willingness to answer to his friends for the way that he's been acting. This shows a great deal of inner strength and not just brute force. Tai is surprised at how forgiving his friends are, but as stated before, by this point they're all pretty close. They know Tai wasn't acting like himself, and they can see that he's remorseful. So they're ready to move on, which is great for the group as a whole. But for Tai and Agumon, moving past this event won't be quite that easy. We see this later on when Tai stops Agumon from digivolving, that they're both still afraid of what can happen if Agumon is pushed too far. Their faith in themselves and their partnership is shaken, and it isn't until they undergo some special training with Piximon that they learn an important lesson on perseverance and comprehend that they can't be held captive by the fear of making mistakes. And just when the group needs them most, Tai shows up with the Greymon to save the day. Seems like things are looking up. But Tai has another major character shaping moment in the same arc. So while the team is being pursued by Edamon and his dark network, the group get a message from Datamon and Izzy gets proof of his working theory that the Digimon, the world that they see, and even their own bodies are composed of living data. Naturally, this concept goes over everyone's head, and they're not sure what to think. They don't feel like data. At least they don't feel like what they would imagine data to feel like. After all, they still have to sleep, eat, and use the bathroom, and they have all experienced varying degrees of pain and discomfort, so there's surely more to it than what they can comprehend. But Tai, who's shown a similar tendency towards things he doesn't understand, decides to oversimplify the situation. Thus, he gets the idea that their situation is more akin to controlling avatars than actually being present in the digital world. This causes Tai to act more recklessly as they sneak into Edamon's base to rescue Datamon. It's not that Tai has a death wish, or that he doesn't understand that the situation is serious. It's more like the liberating feeling when you're playing a difficult game and suddenly enter a section where you have little to no repercussions upon death. After all, it's a lot less nerve-wracking when you're fighting the big boss, and you only have a hundred runes on the line. When Sora scolds him, he doesn't see what she's getting so upset about, but he does rein in his reckless behavior for a time. But things take a turn for the worse when Datamon betrays the group and ends up kidnapping Sora and Biomon. Tai and the others go after them, but Datamon manages to give them the slip. In their pursuit, they come across an electrified fence. Having come through this area before, they know that there's a false point in the fence that they can pass through unharmed. As Izzy attempts to run calculations to determine the weak point, Tai tries to bull rush through and is only stopped by Joe. Tai tries to argue that they don't have time for the calculations. For every second, they hesitate, Sora and Datamon are getting further away. Fortunately, Joe's been eating his spinach, and Tai isn't able to break free. I think it's also important to point out that Tai isn't entirely wrong here. In some situations, immediate action is required, and a moment's hesitation could lead to missed opportunity. The main problem is Tai doesn't understand what's at risk, as he's essentially gambling with his own life without knowledge. In the midst of his calculations, while Joe is restraining Tai, Izzy makes the explanation as simple as possible. If you die here in the digital world, then you're just as dead as you would be in the real world. Tai realizes this just as Izzy informs him that the false point is a little to the left of where he was trying to enter. Tai completely freezes up after that. In addition to all the weight of his mortality being returned to him in a span of a few seconds, he had to acknowledge that he just almost killed himself. It's too much for him to grasp and his body completely stops responding. I'll admit, when I initially saw this, I thought it was kind of lame. But by my second watch through, I honestly really grasped the execution of this whole scene and what it means for Tai's development. I'm telling you guys, don't sleep on these old school characters. Some of them can put a lot of these new ones to shame. Taking a closer look, honestly, you don't have to dwell very long on this whole exchange to see it's actually a pretty realistic response. 
We see sometimes people freeze up, break down, or become physically sick when they're faced with a near-death experience. And even combat veterans can experience a certain type of combat neurosis from fear of dying due to a simple careless mistake, like choking on a piece of food, or perishing from a known allergic reaction. Imagine surviving all these giant monster attacks, just to die by foolishly walking into an electrified fence. With Tai immobilized, Datamon escapes and the team is forced to regroup. Tai takes the loss very hard and puts all the blame on himself. The others are upset about Sora, but they don't gang up on Tai because of it, and rightly so. It wasn't Tai's fault that Datamon betrayed them, and with the head start Datamon had on them, the fact that they had to wait for Izzy to locate the safest route might very well have made Pursuit a moot point. Regardless, Tai sees this result as a mark of his own failure to respond, and vows to see Sora return safe, even if it's the last thing he does. One reoccurring and very admirable trait Tai has is his willingness to take ownership. He never tries to deflect when he makes a mistake, and is actually a lot more likely to bear the burdens of others along with his own, even if he doesn't have to. He doesn't shy away from responsibility. After they deduce Datamon must still be somewhere in the base, Tai comes up with a strategy, and the team moves in for the Sora Bioman rescue mission. So far, everything seems to be going well, but the plan is extremely time sensitive. They can't beat Edamon and his forces in a fight. So before the confusion dies down, they need to have located Sora and be on their way out of the pyramid base. It's getting close to crunch time when Tai and Agumon come across another electrified fence, identical to the last one. And Tai is terrified. This time, there's no Izzy to check for weak points. The clock is ticking, and they won't get a second chance to rescue Sora. Agumon sees how scared Tai is of the fence, and offers to destroy it, though it could take a few minutes. Once again, his partner offers him a way out. No one would blame him for taking the safer option. But Tai refuses. He tells Agumon if he's not able to overcome this fear himself, he may never be able to move past it. That means possibly freezing up again when his friends need him most. It's a pretty tense scene in context, and it's worth noting that the only thing that's changed between this situation and the last is Tai's mindset. So, in likely the greatest display of courage in the series, Tai overcomes his fear by passing his hand through the false wall. With this act, he has the self-assurance that he'll never again be paralyzed by fear when it's standing between him and his friends. Tai's crest of courage begins to glow as a result of Tai's actions. After all, courage is not the absence of fear, but the ability to move forward in spite of it. This marks a major turning point for the battle against Edamon, and Greymon's able to reach the ultimate level as Metal Greymon, and defeats Edamon. But in a strange twist, Tai and Koromon end up back in the human role. Tai, can I make a little suggestion? Huh, open the door! Since they're close to his house, they end up crashing at Tai's apartment where we meet his sister, Kari. We see right away how much Kari admires Tai. Though she acknowledges his shortcoming, she still describes him as the coolest big brother ever. While Kari and Koromon are bonding, Tai seems to be experiencing a type of combat paradox, as he marvels at the simple pleasures people take for granted, like pulling a cold drink out of the fridge, or lying on a comfortable bed. He becomes more exasperated when he gets a strange message from Izzy, followed by Digimon appearing in the city. He sees himself as responsible for the strange occurrences. And though part of him would rather stay, Tai answers the call of duty and returns to the digital world. Upon their return, they soon find out that everyone has gone their separate ways, so Tai makes it his highest priority to get the band back together, and with a little help and a lot of luck, he's able to do just that. It's later on in this arc, while invading Mariloosmon's castle, that Tai is officially chosen as the leader of the group. Tai's initial response is shock, but Matt gives him a heartfelt vote of confidence, telling Tai that he's been leading them this whole time, and points out that the team literally fell apart without him. Now, as the official leader, Tai's very first act is to delegate someone else to solve their immediate problem. This act speaks volumes. First, it shows Tai's growth, as in the past, Tai might have followed a more primitive approach to the solution, like just trusting his instincts while placing cards to match the gate. Second, it shows his humility, as he acknowledges his strengths might not be the most favorable in this situation. Third, he's able to recognize the strengths of his teammates and effectively place them where they can be the most effective, all of which are great leadership traits. 
when they return to the real world, we see Ty really embraces the title of team leader. It doesn't mean things always work out according to plan, but through his actions, the group's faith in Ty grows, and likewise, his trust with them increases as well. Ty is very protective of his little sister, and as she's drawn into the battle as the eighth child, he trusts the others to keep her safe when he's not around. Even when she gets kidnapped by Marilusman under Matt's watch, Matt expects the worst from Ty, but when they meet, Ty's not angry. He says he knows Matt must have done everything he could, and moves on. It isn't until we return to the digital world that we get another big challenge to Ty's character, which occurs after the team defeats Metal Siegemon. This is the team's first big win since returning to the digital world, and the victory was not without cost. And while Ty is looking ahead to the next fight, the rest of the team is at their limit. Wanting to keep pushing ahead, Ty tries to motivate the others by telling them that the death of their friend is all the more reason to push the attack, both for revenge and to assure that there are no more victims. And once again, Ty isn't exactly wrong here. The reason that they've been having such a hard time upon their return is because their enemies have had so much time to prepare, and it would certainly be advantageous to press the attack before their enemy can reorganize. And regardless of how bad you feel, simply sitting down and refusing to move forward definitely won't help your cause. Ty's blunder here is failing to understand how the team is feeling at large. What the team needs now is not a rallying call to arms. Things might have gone over better had he allowed one of the others, probably Sora or Mimi, to give a short eulogy honoring the Fallen, but between Matt's antagonizing and Puppet Mon's interference, Ty doesn't get a chance to rectify this mistake, and this event is a major factor that leads to the team splitting up again. To his credit, Ty doesn't try to demand that the team stay together, though he'd rather it be so. He acknowledges that some of his friends have some things to work out before they can continue as a team. He bears no ill will towards anyone, even Matt who essentially attacked him out of the blue. He says he trusts that they will return when the time is right, and lets them know that he's counting on them before they depart. Though the group splinters off, most everybody sticks with Ty, and it's here that we have Ty's last big character challenge in the series. When Kari falls sick, Ty goes into overdrive trying to find medicine to help her feel better. This leads to Ty once again pushing the team past their limit, without acknowledgement. Now this is actually pretty out of character for Ty, as he's usually pretty quick to correct his past errors. And what's going on here is the same brand of error he made after they defeated Metal Siegemon. But remember, with the chaos that immediately followed, Ty didn't get an opportunity to acknowledge or rectify his mistake. Though we do see that he's concerned about coming off as heartless to the rest of the team. But his actions here are dialed up to 11. Though we do see this tension rising as Ty becomes angry with Izzy once they discover that their location is being broadcasted whenever Izzy logs onto his computer. Ty becomes uncharacteristically short-fused, with, with everyone present noting that he's acting out of character. He then calms down and discloses that he tends to overcompensate his duties as a protective big brother, due to an incident that occurred several years ago, when Kari almost died on his watch. This is Ty's greatest regret, and based on the emotions he's showing here, this event still haunts him. Never thought about what she wanted. She never does. Because she cares. She's a kid. I'm her big brother. I'm supposed to look after her and protect her and think of what's best for her. <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to do. Unfortunately for the team, the situation gets worse as the group gets lost underground in enemy territory. Even after the Digimon collapse from exhaustion multiple times, Ty urges them to suck it up and keep moving. Izzy tries to pull him back, first with reason, and when that doesn't work, he tries a more forceful approach. But Ty ups the ante and resorts to violence. Things might have gotten worse had the fear of running into Machine Germon in their weakened state not been a factor. As a small group huddles in a corner knowing that this could be the end, Ty apologizes to Izzy and tells him he should get his lick back. But Izzy isn't about that life, and refuses. So we do see once again that when Ty realizes he's made a mistake, he's not only willing to apologize, but he wants to do what it takes to make it right. In the subversion, he actually was preparing to go and fight Machine Dramon himself to give the others a chance to escape and to atone for his actions, which is pretty metal. Even so, the fact that Ty gets violent with one of his most faithful supporters this late in the series is not exactly his finest hour. His finest hour would come later on when the group is confronted by Paimon. No, not that one. Ahem. <clears throat> the last of the Dark Masters. Ty sends Sora to get Matt and the others, and tells everyone else to take cover, while he and War Greymon fight Paimon themselves. 
The others think he might be losing it, asking why he'd choose to fight a losing battle alone. But the way Ty sees it, whether one of them fight or seven of them fight, it will be the same result. They're going to need the full team in order to win. And if Paimon takes down even one of them, then it'll all be for naught. So Ty figures, if the two of them can just keep fighting until the full team unites, then they can win. Even as the two proceed to get pummeled, Ty tells the others to stay back, protecting them from the weight of his duty as a leader. It would be difficult to cut it much closer than they did. Ty and War Greymon are in pretty bad shape by the time the others arrive, but even as they're helping him get to his feet, Ty says he knew that they would make it, and he never doubted them for a second. And through the power of friendship, Ty and War Greymon are able to dig deep, get back on their feet, and win the day along with the full team. By this point, whenever Ty makes a decision, there's no question or debate, not because the others are bound by some unbending oath of loyalty, but because they have so much faith in Ty's leadership that they trust whatever conclusion he comes to will be the best for the team. Through numerous challenges and unforeseen circumstances, Ty rose to the occasion to guide the Digidestin with a display of outstanding courage and unwavering leadership. Someone who's truly worthy of the title Leader of the Digidestin. Hey guys, if you made it this far, we just want to say thank you for watching. And if you can spare an extra 5 seconds, help the channel out by giving us a like and sub. The True Believers have spoken, and it seems a lot of you want to see more Digimon content. So let us know which character analysis you want to see next. Notice, analysis incomplete. Are we not going to discuss Ty and the sequel series? Well, we'll leave that up to the True Believers. If we break 100 likes within the first two weeks, we'll get right on. That would require updating this video title. Should be no problem for you. So for those of you watching in the future, drop a comment and tell us how we did. But for now, it's time to bring this video to a close. My name is D Reaper, and I'm a YouTuber for fun. Today's challenge? May I do the challenge? Go for it, analysis machine. Today's challenge, super smash that like button. Well done, analysis machine. Good luck, and we'll see you all in the next one.